Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We are back upstairs in my entertainment room where we were doing some of the VR stuff the other day uh, because I just did something really cool with my newly upgraded gaming PC, which is that I can use it as a computer. I can sit at the desk here and type or play a game with mouse and keyboard and stuff, but I can also run over to the other side of the room here where I've got my home theater and my OLED TV and everything. And without having to do any streaming or any kind of crazy rewiring or unplugging things, I can turn that desktop computer into a game console and play some of the games that work well on a controller on my nice 4K TV, most of the time in a somewhat playable frame rate at 4K as well. I'm gonna show you exactly what I am doing with my PC. We're also gonna talk about what I did to upgrade this PC last weekend as well, because it's a little bit beefier uh, than it was just a few days ago. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that most of the stuff on this video I have paid for with my own funds, but some things came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. I'll point out those items to you as we work our way through this tour. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this new setup is all about. So my computer is kind of a Frankenstein machine. It started its life in 2014 when I put it together with an i7 Haswell chip, a GTX 970 GPU, and 16 gigs of DDR3 RAM. And when I recently upgraded to the Valve Index headset, which I'm still having trouble with, by the way, uh, I noticed that my computer wasn't able to keep the GPU going at the speed it needed to to hit the frame rates that that headset can run at. Uh, so what I decided to do was do an upgrade of just the things I needed to upgrade to get the computer to where it needed to be. And that meant swapping out the processor, the motherboard, and the RAM. So we went from that i7 processor to an i9-9600K. I know a lot of you will be wondering, why didn't you go with the Ryzen chip? And the reason is, is that I do something called NDI video here in the house. Uh, what that lets me do is take whatever is on the screen on this PC and beam it into my TriCaster downstairs or send it into OBS. And that's something that Intel chips just do better than AMD chips do at the moment. And that was a big decision factor in going with that i9 chip over something from AMD. And I'm very impressed with those AMD processors, nothing against AMD at all, but for me, this was the better solution. So that was the processor we went with. I also bought an Asus Republic of Gaming motherboard, a Maximus 11. It was kind of the lowest price motherboard that fit my needs. So I put that in there. Uh, we also got some Corsair RAM, 16 gigabytes of Dominator DDR4 RAM that I have clocked at 3.33 gigahertz. I did the XMP2 settings in the BIOS to get there and everything has been rock solid and stable. Now the GPU in there is actually a GTX 1080. I upgraded the GPU on the old configuration about two years ago from a GTX 970. So it's able to do, I think, a pretty decent job. It's not the fastest thing out there, but for what I'm doing with it, it works fine. Now here's the cool thing. I'm gonna have James kind of get in a little bit closer here. Um, so let's say we want to take what's on the screen here and transmit it over to my television. I've got a little batch file here called HDMI. And when I click on this, what's gonna happen here is that it's going to switch automatically over to my OLED TV here. It's gonna switch into HDR mode and I've got myself everything on my television now. And I'm doing this, by the way, with a little wireless Logitech keyboard and I've got my Xbox Bluetooth game controller. All that stuff is communicating wirelessly back to the computer. And I was able to get this to work with an HDMI cable that we reviewed uh, a couple of months back and it came in free of charge through the Amazon Vine program. Uh, and what it is is a HDMI to fiber optic cable and surprisingly, it introduces very little latency into the mix, and the games are very playable on this thing. Mouse clicks feel very immediate. In my testing of that cable, it was maybe seven to 10 milliseconds, so it does add a marginal amount of lag to the mix, but it is really a surprisingly good cable. It costs about 75 bucks for a 50-foot cable. They have longer ones available too for a little bit more, and I'm just running it all the way around the perimeter of the room here to my home theater receiver, and it's been working great. And when I'm done, I go back over to my little batch file and hit the display port one and it shoots the video back onto this display and I can begin using it as a computer again. It's been working tremendously well, much better than I expected it to work, honestly. And I think those cables are just really superb for this particular kind of application. 
and I don't have to move the PC around to get all this done. So let's take a look at some of the games that I ran on it. Uh, this is Ace Combat 7. It is running at 4K, and I'll show you some of the settings that I grabbed from the GeForce experience here so you can get a feel for what it was set to. And I was getting pretty much 60 frames per second most of the time. It will dip down here and there. Um, it's not bothering me all that much. I suppose if I spent more on the GPU, I could get it to go a little bit smoother, but it's fine. And if I really wanted super smooth, I could set it to 1080p, and I'm sure I would get uh, a very solid 60 with this particular configuration. I also ran Crackdown 3, which came in with that Game Pass subscription I bought the other day. Uh, that's been working uh, pretty well on here, too. I had to go a little bit lower on the settings to hit a somewhat playable 60 FPS frame rate that also varies a bit, uh, but it does seem to work fine, and it looks better than my Xbox One S does on the same display, so that was a good experience. Uh, GTA 5 looked absolutely beautiful on there, and I was able to hit uh, 60 frames per second most of the time. Not all the time, but most of it. I do, though, are having some issues with textures loading in uh, on the game, and I think it might be due to the speed of the drive it is running from. So I may reinstall GTA 5 on a different disk and see if I can speed that up a bit. And then, this was really fun, I took out the Dolphin emulator and loaded up my favorite GameCube game, probably my favorite Star Wars game of all time, Rogue Leader. And you can see just how wonderful it is running here. I installed the HD texture pack for Rogue Leader and it just ran super smooth, uh, 60 frames per second most of the time, but it occasionally would dip out a little bit here and there. Uh, we did run it at 1080p. The 4K was not as playable, but the TV was upscaling uh, really nicely. And when you take a game that was designed for standard definition and just blow it up to uh, 1080p and get all that texture stuff going, it looks a lot better even at 1080p versus 4K. So that was a nice surprise to have that running as nicely as it did there. Uh, the other retro games that I play, I usually do on my FPGA consoles now for lower input lag. Now, on the 3D Mark Time Spy test, which is a DirectX 12 benchmark, I got a score of 7,448 with my new configuration. Uh, GPU score is identical because it is the same GPU, but the CPU is doing much better uh, at 30 frames per second versus 16. And I also was able to get better performance in some of the VR games that I was playing as well, and I knocked out a lot of the performance bottlenecks that I was running into with it. And then when I'm done using this thing as a game console, I can just click on my DisplayPort batch file. That will kill the display on the TV, and then it will refire up the monitor over there. Sometimes I have to do it twice for some reason, but on the second go around, usually things go back to normal here. And hopefully by the time I get over to the screen, it should, there we go, pop back up here and I can start uh, playing my games on the monitor here or uh, just do my usual computer stuff. I also have a Thunderbolt dock that came in free of charge from CalDigit that I use for my Mac when it's up here. So if I have to do some video editing or something, I can just pop in that cable and switch it over to uh, the Mac to get that done. One thing I'm contemplating is maybe trying to do a Hackintosh with this thing, given the processor power that I have in there. It would make a really nice video editing workstation. And some of you might be curious about the monitor that we're using here. Uh, this is something that also came in from the Amazon Vine program a while back. I think I did a review on it too about a year or two ago. Uh, this is one of these widescreen 1440p monitors. I think it's uh, 3440 by 1440p. And it's also running at 100 hertz as a Samsung display. And it is great for gaming uh, because you have that high frame rate. Uh, the latency is pretty low on it. And of course, you've got that nice wide image. You can see me playing Doom on this thing. And it's really just a lot of fun there. So I'm, I'm pretty pleased with how this is working so far. There are some glitches and things that I have to deal with every once in a while. The big issue is getting the games configured properly for that display over there. You do have to do some graphical tweaks that you would not have to do typically on a game console, but it really is worth the effort. I've been doing a lot of the GeForce experience for the games that support that because once that display is active, I can jump into the GeForce experience, hit the optimize button, and then load the game up. And one of the things that's been really interesting about the GeForce experience is that when I go back to this display, it can reconfigure the graphics for that, and we're back to this display's best settings versus the 4K settings on the other monitor. So really nice, actually, how all this stuff is just seeming to work better than I expected, especially that cable and the low latency I'm getting off of it. So overall, I am quite happy uh, with how this is working. But there's one more thing to check out because when I am not in this room, I can still make use of the power that I have inside of this PC to stream games to other parts of the house. Let's head down to the studio and check that out.
So we're downstairs in my studio and I've got my TV and my Nvidia Shield down here. And what I can do is actually stream games from the PC upstairs and kind of use it as a gaming server. So we're gonna go over to the Nvidia games here uh, on my Nvidia Shield. And if I go over to game stream, I can pull up a list of games that are supported by default or futz around on Steam and just load up games that way. But we're gonna take a look here at No Man's Sky. And it gives you a pretty nice interface here as to what you can and can't do. Uh, so a lot of these games that will run at 1080p 60, some will actually stream downstairs here at 4K. Uh, this one is a 1080p game, I'm gonna click on play. And what that's gonna do is summon the game on my game machine upstairs, and then we'll be able to play it down here. Let's take a look when it loads up. So here is No Man's Sky streaming over the network at 1080p 60 frames per second. Uh, one thing you will probably discover with network streaming is that there is a little bit of input lag with this. You may not always notice it in games like this one, but when you're doing games that require more precise button pushes, that might be where this becomes a problem. But there are, of course, a lot of games that play just fine with this. Now, in addition to using an NVIDIA Shield, you can also look at uh, other devices if you download the Moonlight app, which runs on just about every platform out there. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways you can stream in-house, including uh, something like this GPD XD Plus we looked at recently here on the channel. You've got a lot of options for in-home game streaming, including Steam's in-home streaming, and you can really uh, make your game machine into a game server in addition to all the things that I am doing with it as well. Let me know what you thought of this down in the comments below. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, emudev.org, Tom Albrecht, Brian Parker, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.